At this stage, can I just pass the, the ball across to Malcolm Bell on the steering team? You'll see his details on the program. Uh, he's been seconded down here for some time with Sarah from the Ministry of Education, back in that role now. And Malcolm's going to introduce you to a couple of people just to uh, focus our minds on why we're here. So, Malcolm, I'll pass it over to you. Now, I've turned these on. Can you all hear me? I'm echoing, so you must be able to. Okay, guys, if you just... Page could be the rose between two thorns. All right, folks, what, uh, what we thought we would do uh, is just um, basically the three of us are going to talk amongst ourselves with you listening. Uh, the reason we thought of this is that we're actually here because of the young people that we teach from early childhood through to tertiary. And so we just thought that perhaps kicking the session off with a little chat to these two, who will introduce themselves in a moment, um, to see what it is for them that's turned them on to and off uh, learning. And we're trying to be about 10 minutes, quarter an hour. They've been nervous. They're not nervous now. They've had some lolly cake and they're feeling quite happy, and I have had too. So we're just going to have a little informal chat to remind us why we're all here. All right, now I've got Paige and Cuba, and I'm going to ask Paige first to lead off by telling us who she is, where she's from, a wee bit about herself, then she'll hand over to Cuba to do the same. All righty. Hi, everybody. My name is Paige Unum Shaw, and I'm a Year 12 student at Kaipo High School. And something about myself. Who knows? Um, I'm looking at going into education further on when I'm older, so this is a really good opportunity to learn some more, and I'm excited. Hello, I'm Kiwa Shanka, and I'm a Year 12 student from Arunui High School. Something about myself, well, that's such a broad question, so I guess I'll focus on the education since that's a key focus of this. Um, later on in tertiary study, I'd like to get into the medical field at present, so yeah. Okay, so I, I've got some questions that they already know about and um, as starters, but what I'm, I'm hoping that actually they'll bounce off each other and that I won't have to interrupt too often with a question. So really what, what I'm going to start with um, is with um, both of them. I just want them to describe in their experience the horny old thing, what, horny old thing, sorry, um, what makes a good teacher? So what is it about education that's, and their teachers have turned them on to education and turned them on to learning? So we'll start with Paige and then we'll go to Kiwa and bounce off each other. Alrighty, so for me, what makes a good teacher is someone who is willing to build relationships with you and is quite relatable because in turn when they set those expectations, um, you're more inspired to excel and learn and it just creates a much better environment and culture for you to learn in. If a teacher's, you know, sort of interested in you and not just what they're teaching. They're more into students and almost less about teaching. It sort of bounces off and it really, yeah, it's, it's a good place and person to be around and learn with. So that's my opinion. Yeah, I completely agree with that. That is really good. In addition, I think that a good teacher would be someone who blurs the differences between their students and has the key focus of doing all that they can to ensure that everyone has an equal chance to succeed. Cool, okay. So, Kiwa, I'm gonna to come to you now. What, what, sort, of, what sort of things um, have sort of turned you on to education? You're, you're obviously a pretty successful student. You're highly recommended to come here. Or you wanna go and be a doctor. Um, what, what, what has inspired you to learn more, at, both at school and anything outside of school? Then I'll task Paige to comment. Um, gosh, that's a good question. <laughs> I guess uh, quite, from quite a young age, I've had a, a keen interest in education and learning in general. But from a school perspective, influence would have come from teachers, I guess. They have introduced me to pathways that have interested me, and they have given me a foundation that I can work towards to help me achieve my dreams. Yeah, I really like that. Um, I think as a student, buildings are just buildings and it's about the passion that comes from subjects and learning. And that's not just from teachers, that's from students as well and the atmosphere that you're in. And those sort of things 
combined are basically what's going to influence you and, you know, promote your learning and growth <laughs> in life, really. So, it's cool. That's cool. A lot about personalities there, isn't it, really? Um, quite like that. I've always thought that teaching was sort of about 80% personality and 20%, 10% knowledge and 10% trying to keep up with the kids. So I think that's probably, probably pretty fair. Um, Paige, I'm going to ask you uh, a bit of a curly question. Um, I don't expect you guys to know the chapter and verse of the, uh, this investing in education success thing that the current government's working on, but um, they're looking at, at this stage, at um, acknowledging and paying lead teachers, lead principals a bit more money for them to work both within their schools and in clusters of schools to help spread good practice and lift overall education achievement. Now, I hope I've summed that okay. I'm watching the people from the ministry thinking, God, I hope I've got that right, but that's a, that's in my layman's language. So, Paige, I, I've, I've sent them both this, this question, and Paige said to me, oh, I don't know much about it. Oh, that's fine. Just what do you think of the idea, and, and what are some of the mechanics you might worry about from a student's perspective? Ooh, all righty. Um, for me, well, I think in theory it does sound good. It's a... It's a good idea, but you've got to look at it um, from different perspectives. And in reality, there could be a few problems. I mean, I like the idea of having lead principals one-on-one -on -one going to schools, dealing with the issues and the flaws and things like that that are quite dominant in our schools today. Um, because it would help, you know, create direction and change and promote just positive goals flowing throughout schools and age groups in general. But you've also got to look at it from a sort of... Uh, how would you say, community-based perspective. You know, every school has their own culture and their own learning culture and things that make them unique. So that's definitely going to come into, um, into balance. You know, you can have problems there with different schools interacting. Of course, sharing practices, that's a really, really good idea. It's just you'd have to go a very logical way about it and the right way about it because I think it could succeed, it really could and it could be a great growth and change in our educational system. It's just about incorporating and dealing with the differences in schools and education across the board today. It's just, it can be controversial but it could be really good as well. So it's sort of, to approach it the right way, it could be really, really effective. Sharing practice is always a good idea, you know. It's good, but you've just got to think about it the right way and take into consideration different cultures and schools' ethics. Cool. That's good. Can you anything to add? Wow. Um, <laughs> hard, hard act to follow. <laughs> yeah, that's very good, Paige. Gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, well, your points are really good. I completely agree with the idea. I guess I would add that, um, I guess with the whole goals and all, I think it could probably bring quite an amount of stress on the teachers, I guess. And then it could also maybe pose even a distraction from their teaching. Like, they'll probably be more living in the future than in the present. That's just something I, I could see maybe possibly happening. Okay. That's cool. But I like living in the future. I think that's wonderful. I mean, my future's a hell of a lot shorter than yours, but, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> but I like living in the future. Um, I just, just My last question, really, is... I explained to Paige and Kira that not to be overawed by this audience. We're only 90. We're all, we're all here for the same reason. We're ordinary people. Uh, we have leadership roles in our schools, our organisations and our communities. But we are just ordinary people. And I wonder if you guys have got any comment you'd like to make to the people here. We're talking here about enhancing learning cultures and developing a better learning culture. I really like your comment, Paige, about... Um, each school is different. Each school has its own unique is uh, issues, challenges, if you like, um, and its own learning culture, and how can that be shared? Um, I remember John Graham once, who, ex-head of Auckland Grammar, when we put him into, um, I forgot the name of the school, uh, so even Hillary Cottage, was it, down in South Auckland? And uh, John and I are old sparring partners, you know, me from the left, him from the right. Now I'm probably more like him than I was in those young days, but... He said he had to throw out the book on how to run a school. He had to throw out the Auckland Grammar book and start a new book. And I thought that was amazing for a man like Sue John, as he now is. So have you guys got any comment for us as we go into these two days about enhancing learning cultures to make education better for you? 
Don't worry if you haven't. Um, well, mine's sort of something that everyone here knows about and, you know, it's very common, but I think that just to bear in mind that we need to more or less focus on and identifying really the reoccurring patterns in our school today, and by that I mean behaviour, attendance, lack of leadership, particularly in high schools, and hopefully that we could have some sort of primary intervention to perhaps, um, well, stop it or even manage it from becoming more of a problem in the future, and this will help, you know, promote going along the right path throughout education. It's more or less identifying uh, identifying the problems and looking at the macro rather than the micro instead of the what, the how, the who. Focus on the why and how we can change that. That's probably all I'd really have to add to it. That's all, that's all she has to add to it? My God. Well done, Paige. Thank you. Wow, again. <laughs> <laughs> she make you first next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, um, one comment that I would like to add, I guess, is, well, I guess we're all aware of it, is just maintaining the awareness of difference and the differences of each culture, you know, views and all. So, yeah, that's all I have to add. That's cool. Well, um, these two delightful young people were, a bit, were recommended to me by Cheryl, my colleague Cheryl Doig here from Think Beyond, and I think Lyle, Gay and Birgit, we made a good decision. So thank you, you two. Thank you. Bob.